Hey everybody, it's Fox with Foxio Plays, and this is Return to Lothric, Dark Souls 3 playthrough on PC, episode 1, the introduction. Let's get it started in here. I think that's actually a song. Hey, I actually had to, oh, I didn't have to, but I chose to cancel my Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin playthrough. I just got really, really tired of it. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't holding my interest, and it was frustrating me in many, many ways. So I decided that for my own mental sanity, that's ha I'm joking, half joking, uh, went ahead and canceled the playthrough. So th the expectation was that there was always that possibility, um, and it happened. So yeah, but hey, let me tell you something. Already, this looks so much better than Dark Souls 2, just visually in every possible way it, it looks better the coloration the contrast uh the animation oh the way it feels is so much better it feels so much smoother wow you know it, it's just hard to describe how much better and more responsive the controls and animations feel in this game versus dark souls 2. it's it's a world of difference and it's amazing because if you were to just look at the two games they, they kind of look really similar they kind of look really similar that's like that phrase from xenogears what was it it kind of looks a lot like it was translated from japanese as it kind of looks a lot like no it, it 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 is oh they look so similar um in so many ways but yet they are so vastly different and hey today's drink of choice is nothing different than the usual it's hot black coffee Ooh, ow that's burning my tongue actually it's too hot. Ashen Estes Flask. Actually, I could just not even pick that up. <laughs> because I don't plan on using it. You know. This guy's here to give you a chance to do a free backstab. Mm. Now that. That. Is a backstab. Not that crap from Dark Souls 2. That right there is a real backstab. Welcome back, Backstab. I missed you in Dark Souls 2. Alright, here we go. Oh! Yes! Now, my biggest complaint about this game is that I think they based it too much on Bloodborne. Not lore-wise, but when it comes to enemy design, how some of the areas look, and how the game plays, it feels remarkably Bloodborne-ish. And the problem I have with that is uh, the Souls combat system starts to fall apart at the speed that Bloodborne plays at. Bloodborne operates at just a little too fast for the game engine. Um, it's just uh, it's just not really, in my opinion, it's not really designed to function that quickly. It starts to kind of fall apart, especially when you get lots of enemies coming at you. With the lock-on system the way it is. Uh, whoops, sorry, I just bumped my microphone. Uh, the lock-on system, as we've discussed in many previous episodes of Souls playthroughs, is only ideal, is only really very good for one-on-one -on -one encounters. It can function okay for uh, one versus two, but once you start to get three and beyond... Uh, especially enemies that move quickly, or enemies that have erratic movement patterns, uh, the, the lock-on system just utterly fails, and, and things start falling apart at that point. Now, this enemy right here reminds me a lot of Bloodborne. A lot of Bloodborne. This is, a, this is just a Bloodborne enemy in so many ways. Get him, get him, get him! Oh, I missed it. Darn it. I think, yeah, I think that was my opportunity that I missed. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I drained my stamina, but it worked out in the end. Uh, I do die to this guy frequently. But I was playing uh, Dark Souls 2, and, you know, playing this, Dark Souls 2 uh, versus this made me feel like I was, like, handicapped. Like, there was something, like, you had a bad controller that didn't, uh function at the right speed or something. Uh, so, playing this, I feel like the handicap has turned been turned off. 
that I'm back to normal. Uh, you know, so maybe it's not fair the level to which I criticize Dark Souls 2, but that's that's the way I feel about the game, um, and that's the way the game kind of operates in my experience. Oh shoot, I can't believe that didn't hit me. I can't believe I didn't get hit by that either. I was right there, and he was flailing all over the place. I, I'm so close to getting hit by nearly every one of these attacks, and yet not being hit. It's like some sort of miracle. Alright, I'm not going to get sloppy and go for an R1 spam right now. I'm just going to stick to what works. There we go. Nice! I don't think I took any damage. That's pretty cool. Off to a good start. Off to a very good start. Alright, but I love that they put that enemy in sort of what you can consider the tutorial area. Because... Coffee break. Because it, it gives you the opportunity to challenge yourself. Kind of like uh, in Demon Souls with the... Uh, oh gosh, what's that enemy called? The first boss that you're really intended to die to but you can defeat. Uh, something demon or I don't know, whatever. It's a, it's an opportunity to challenge the player. It's an opportunity for the player to optionally challenge himself or herself or themselves or zer self or z self or whatever pronoun you pick today. I don't want that two hundred fifty thousand dollar New York City fine for not using your chosen pronoun. My chosen pronoun is uh, His Majesty. So when referring to me, uh, please say His Majesty. <laughs> That, that was literally what somebody chose at a university. I can't remember which university, but they, they select, they, they chose, like there was a drop down box of pronouns to choose. Like universities are doing this. They're just bastions of insanity. So there was an option to write in your own, and he wrote in like something like your majesty or his majesty. I think he got in trouble for it too, but you know, whatever. Your pronouns are your choice. Just don't pick something we disagree with. Make sure you keep it something we think is good. Okay, there. So it's not really my choice. It's yours. Oh, crap. That was my fault. Oh, shoot. Oh, crap. I'm, I'm getting my butt kicked here by this guy. Oh, that is how backstabs should feel, guys. Oh, that feels good to backstab that way. That feels so amazing. That's the way a backstab should be. Not this Dark Souls 2 nonsense. You know what? I heavily, heavily debated not doing this playthrough. I actually started it, and I stopped. And then I restarted it and thought, okay, I'll do it. So I'm glad I did, though, because now that I'm doing it, I'm really enjoying it so far. There will be some frustrating moments, I guarantee you. But uh, so far, I'm finding it to be a mostly enjoyable experience. Uh, or a completely enjoyable experience, actually. And um, I don't expect that to change radically anytime soon here. I just love the backgrounds in this game. They don't all match what they're supposed to be 100%, but that's fine. A lot of concessions made for the consoles always carry over into PC games. Well, I, I shouldn't say always, but generally carry over into PC games. Most developers are not going to go back and modify the game heavily just to make it look better for PC players. They're going to keep a lot of the concessions that they made for consoles. Because uh, consoles just aren't powerful enough for a developer's vision. Shoot, I mean, if you look at, like, The Witcher 3, uh, you want to play that at max, uh, max quality. Even at uh, just 1080p. With, like, NVIDIA physics turned up all the way, good luck even getting 30 FPS. With the, one of the most, you could get the most powerful graphics card available. But if you jack up all of the settings, all of them, including NVIDIA physics, that's the big one, you're probably going to see frame rates uh, mostly in the, I would say, 40-ish range. Um, some below 30, I'm sure. Dropping down into the 30s or less. Yeah, NVIDIA physics just kills your frame rate. So if you're ever having frame rate troubles in a game and there's a NVIDIA physics option, turn it down. If you're still having frame rate issues, just turn it off. Uh, that was the case like when I was playing uh, Alice Madness Returns, which is actually a good game, by the way. I think that's what it's called, right? Alice Madness Returns. 
um, I was having these severe frame rate drops. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, this game is not that demanding. I, I'm getting frame rates in the 20s at times. I turned off the NVIDIA physics, or I actually turned it to low. Then I had nonstop 60. NVIDIA physics, man. Okay. I do occasionally have uh, difficulty with this boss. Um, the, the part I have difficulty with is the wild, ridiculous, flailing nonsense of the Black Serpent uh, portion of it. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. He's already starting. He's already going full hardcore. Full-on hardcore. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. Oh shoot, I dodged way too early. And and yeah, the distance on that on that spear or what or that scythe is insane. This is where it just gets nuts. And I think that's that's designed to make you go whoa. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that second attack. Yeah, I did not mean to do that second attack. Oh crap. Yeah, and the distance now that he has is, is insane. There we go. Get a little R1 spam in there. I think the solution might be to actually stay up close on him. This fight, uh, this fight's always a mess for me. Every time I do it, it ends up being messy. And like I said, sometimes I actually die to him. It's the only first boss in a Souls game that I can't consistently kill reliably. Look at that giant tomb, not not tombstone, uh, coffin. All right. Why they don't let you use the bonfire for leveling and everything else like they do in original Dark Souls, I don't know. But um, interestingly enough, uh, I've heard people complain about that, and I complain about it too. But they'll complain about it in the sense that you know why why don't the bonfires work like they're supposed to? Um, but actually, even though that's how I think bonfires should work, that's not how they actually work in most of the series. Because if you think about it, Dark Souls is literally the only Soulsborne game where it functions that way. In Demon Souls, the Archstones are just teleportation points. That's it. That's all they do. They teleport you back to the Nexus. Nothing more. In Dark Souls 2, they're pretty much just teleportation points. You can also get torches out of them, but, you know, you basically just teleport. I mean, you can burn a few things at them that affect the local area, but to level and all that other stuff, you have to return to Majula. In Dark Souls 3, again, they're mainly just teleportation points. You have to return to Firelink Shrine to do most stuff. So, uh, same with Bloodborne. Bloodborne, just like uh, the Archstones from Demon Souls. So, Dark Souls is literally the only Souls game where the bonfires function like that. Oh, crap. Okay, here we go. All right, you might hear a dog barking in the background. I don't feel like going and telling her to shut up. But I might have to. We'll see. All right, we have one of those yappy dogs. You know how it is. All right, this, my friends, is Return to Lothric. Wow. Once again, I just want to comment. This, the way this feels is so much better than Dark Souls 2. It's hard to even put it to words. It's just such a relief to play a game that has responsive animation and control and movement. Dark Souls 2 is just so floaty and off and weird, and, and that, that's the best way to describe it, is floaty. Like I said, it feels like you're floating across the ground. When you combine that with all the uh, atrociously bad game design, Dark Souls 2 ends up being a pretty lackluster drag to play. 
Ooh, can you give me an item now? Gesture's fine, but I really want an item. Okay, whatever. All right. Embed the coiled sword. Stick it in there. Stick it in there. Might want to take your hand out of the fire there, bro. It gets warm pretty quick. Rest at the bonfire. So, I mean, you can do a few things, obviously, here, but, um, you know, most of your stuff gets done, or your leveling, at least, gets done here. I want to level up. Give me some levels. Actually, let me double check and see what the uh, long sword is in this game. The long sword. D and D. D and D. Not A D and D, but D and D. So strength and dexterity. So we'll just kind of alternate leveling those, or stamina, or I don't know, whatever. Let's uh, let's get a little endurance. And by little, I mean as much as I can, apparently. Okay, so this, my friends, is the Firelink Shrine. I would say, of all the Soulsborne games, this is my favorite hub area. I almost said hub world, it's not a world. This is my favorite hub area. Hub area. The Nexus is probably number two. Um... And the reason this is my favorite is simply because... Or it's my favorite right now, I should say. I don't know what I said was my favorite in the past. Because it just has that sense of importance to it, in my opinion. Calling it the Firelink Shrine. That great, big, open, circular middle area with the bonfire in the center. The different levels to it, even though I sometimes get confused to which level I'm on or what level I need to go to. You know, the thrones set up there. They set it up to look important, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, it's pretty big and expansive. I, I will say, though, that, you know, it probably is a good thing that they include the blacksmith here rather than having to run all over the place to find different blacksmiths in different areas of the game world. I mean, it does feel rewarding in some ways, but when you have to remember where they are or find them and then, tra tra you know, what do I want to say, teleport around to find them. Uh, it can get a little frustrating. Is that the way I came in? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yes, it is. Alright, so this is the way I came in. So now what I need is the other path here. There are some secrets around this area, though I don't remember exactly where they are. Uh, I'll have to figure it out. Ooh, look at that. Jump down there for good success. Run around and pick up all the items here. You you can tell my familiarity with these games because when I play Dark Souls, I know I, I generally know what I'm doing for the most part. Uh, last time I'd been away for so long that it did take me just a little bit of time to reacclimate. And this is a uh, you know the giant tree from Dark Souls Two. Which is just, bleh, whatever. I don't really care that it's there or not there all that much. I could take it or leave it. And in the world of Dark Souls 3, that's the best approach to have, right? Let's see. Wait a minute. Do I suddenly have more souls or can I level up again? Yeah, where'd I get those souls from? What just am I am I totally confused? How did I just get more souls? I have no idea. Whatever. Oh, did I not confirm it? Maybe that's what happened. Maybe I didn't even confirm it. Yeah, maybe I didn't confirm my levels. No, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever happened, happened. Let's uh let's see what we can find running around here. I know there are a few people here and the rest uh they come here after you find them in the game world. Kind of like uh, in the rest of the series. As you find them, they pop up in the hub. Alright. 
Let's visit. What's his face? Oh, I'm getting confused as to what's what and where's where. Oh, wait, we'll stop and visit her first. I think she gives us something, doesn't she? No, okay. She does have something I wanted to buy. Yeah, the torch, that's right. A torch and... We'll get at least a few arrows, just to make sure we have some on hand. Even though I don't think we have a bow at the moment, but we'll figure it all out in the end. Okay, let's talk to him, although I'm pretty sure he never gives us anything. Well, I mean a gesture, but I meant an item. Let's allot the Estus. We're not going to do any Ashen Estus. I'm pretty sure we can't upgrade anything yet, which in this game is Reinforce. No, okay. So we have, well, we have one Titanite Shard, actually. Huh. I didn't realize we had any. That's that's interesting. So we've got one. We need one more to do this little upgrade. Okay, now I want to head to the first area. And I think it's from here, right? Yes, the High Wall of Lothric. Let us begin. Um, yeah, the Graveyard of Ash, or Ash Graveyard, whatever it's called, I, I'm not a big fan of the area in general. It does an okay job as a tutorial zone, but it's not as interesting as the Undead, uh, the Northern Undead Asylum. Um, I would say it's on par, roughly equal to or, or, or slightly better than Dark Souls 2, that intro area, I can't think of what it's called. Um, which was just sort of, eh, nothing terribly impressive. Mm-hmm, and here we are. The high wall of Lothric. It's just next to the low wall of Lothric, which is next to the medium wall of Lothric. And look at that. You can actually make effective use of your stamina. It comes back quite quickly. Rolls don't absorb all your stamina. So much better than Dark Souls 2. So much better. Yes, I'm going to keep commenting. <laughs> this game is better than Dark Souls 2. All right. Breaking some chairs and some benches. High Walled Lothric. I do get turned around in this area a little bit. I usually don't get hopelessly lost, but I do occasionally get turned around. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I remember there's a guy up there gonna shoot us. Haha. -ha. Came to mind just in time. Oh, crap. One thing I don't like, though, is uh, they really, really were big fans of making nearly everything that shoots you with a bow and arrow or a, or a crossbow be like a fire arrow or fire bolt. They all have fire attached. Oh, shoot. My bad. And I, I think the reason they did that is so that you cannot just confidently block with uh, with no penalties. I might actually try to parry this guy. That... Ooh. I, I took damage on that, though, didn't I? Yeah, I think I took damage on that parry. Okay. I've never I don't think I've ever parried this guy before, so but we'll try. Oh shoot. Oh, there we go. I might just be getting lucky on these, because I remember having a lot of trouble parrying this game, but not as much trouble as parrying in Dark Souls 2. Uh by far Dark Souls 2 has the worst parrying. The timings are just so screwy. And then the parry itself is ridiculous. You can't immediately repost, you gotta sit there and wait for the for the guy to like land on their knees or something. I don't know, it's kind of silly. Or fall back on their butt. It, it's just a really weird sort of sloppy animation. Oh, you know what? Let's jump on that little platform and see if there's anything on there. And for some reason, the game just seems to look smoother as I play it than Dark Souls 2 ever did. I don't know why. They both run at a buttery smooth 60 FPS. 
Um, I don't experience drops in Dark Souls 2, and I don't know what what it is. Like, some games, even though the frame rate is the same as another game, even though they both play at a solid 60 on my system, one will simply just look smoother than the other. I can't always explain why. Maybe frame timing? Or it could also be something with the game engine and how the game engine uh, renders animations and effects and what else. There are a lot of things that could go into that. There's no way to know for 100% sure exactly what all affects your perception of the smoothness of gameplay in a game. You could write a thesis paper on it. You could write many thesis papers on it. You could write many thesi. That's plural thesis. Oh, the bolt went right through this dude. It's supposed to kill him. Oh, gosh darn it. I forgot about that guy right there. Oh, wait, I did get him, didn't I? I killed him before he turned into that thing. Well, th there's a plus and a minus there. If you kill him before he turns into the little, like, uh, uh, black snake creature, then you don't get the bonus from killing the black snake thing. If you kill the black snake thing, you get uh, upgrade material, titanite shard, in this case, I do believe. So it m may have actually been worth it to let him turn into the snake and then take my chances to get the uh, titanite shard so I can immediately upgrade. But those things are very difficult for me because they just flail around wildly. And it's also very difficult for me to gauge when um, when and if I'll get hit. Like, the hitboxes seem kind of wonky. Am I already confused as to where to go? I am, aren't I? I'm already like, uh, did I? Am I stuck? That's locked right there. That's not a path. We can't go down here, because that's locked. It's not open from the side, at least. And that's a dead end. Okay, I must have missed the path up here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is the way. Maybe. <laughs> you can tell this is a, a fresh playthrough. Haven't, haven't been at the game in a while. Because now I'm somehow already confused on where to go. How, how, do, how am I getting? How am I getting lost already? How is that even possible? You you could actually just walk around that. This is a dark. This is a Dark Souls two style blockade obstruction. There's there's no no reason you wouldn't be able to get around that. No reason whatsoever. Or through there, but whatever. There's nothing there, it's just a little alcove. Okay, so I'm already confused as to the path forward. That's nice, I, I'm literally stuck at the very beginning of the game. I don't know how I'm not seeing where to go. <laughs> Come on, this is silly. Where is the path forward? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, if you could get there and jump onto that, but that's probably instant death. That's probably a kill box down there. You're not intended to go that direction. All right. I'm already stuck. This is embarrassing. I have played through this game a couple times, and I'm, yeah, okay, um, hmm, well, let's go back up here, and see if there's another path, aha, uh -huh. there we go, okay, alright, we got it. Oh shoot, oh I thought we were going to connect at the same time. Uh, one of the complaints I had about this game is that because of the timing on enemy attacks, it's, it's common to trade hits. No, not trade hits even, it's common to hit each other at the same time. It's common for you to hit the enemy at the moment the enemy hits you. Just the way they designed the timings. 
not a big deal, but kind of annoying. You gotta just know that sometimes, even though it looks like you should be able to hit him before he hits you, you might want to back up a bit, let them take the first swing, and then you can do the follow-up. There's a way down there and a way up here. That wasn't a hit? Come on now. Oh crap. Oh shoot! Oh, I got lucky on that. I thought they were both gonna hit me at once. I could have died from that. Who's throwing stuff at me? Look at this jerk up here throwing stuff at me. Oh crap! Whew. Oh jeez, that guy so got me. And again. Oh, and again. Okay. Now I'm recalling some of the reasons I had complaints about the game that uh, they don't have as, mu as much of the rushdown attacks that Dark Souls 2 had. Dark Souls 2 used that to a comedic, ridiculous level. But this this game does throw in some kind of little, eh, uh, tactics that feel a bit underhanded. Uh, like I said, you know, more of that bloodborne, wild, swinging, flailing, kind of uh, just stuff going crazy. Uncontrolled attacks and series of attacks, combos, things of that, things of that nature. Can I jump down there safely? Is that like a kill zone right there? What would you do if you jumped down there? Then jump down there and then, yeah. I don't know, I've never tried that. I'm not going to try it right now. It's either a secret I'm not aware of or instant death. <laughs> One or the other. Or secret instant death. Ooh, Titan Eye Shard. Very good. Actually, we're going to go back and use that because uh, that would be very beneficial to have an upgraded uh, longsword already. By the way, guys, I think we're actually going to stick with this armor set and uh, this weapon. We might switch to the... I think there's an Elite Knight armor set in this game. If so, we might switch to that. And I, I clicked the wrong bonfire. Darn it. My bad. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Let's first go upgrade, and then I think we can level, but we'll give it a shot. Longsword. Love the longsword. Big fan of the longsword. Okay, longsword plus one. Actually, let's unequip that Ashen Estus Flask, because that's just a waste of an icon uh, of, a, of a slot. 1896, probably not enough. Oh, it is. Cool. Uh, that's health, right? No, that's equipment load. Okay. That gives us one point. That gives us one point. Okay, we'll go with... Well, hang on now. Hang on now. Okay, yeah, we did it. All right. Cool. Cool beans. We'll, we'll, we'll do with it. We'll do with it. Travel to the High Wall of Lothric. Cool. It's a nice feeling to have a weapon upgraded so quickly. I was surprised, though, by Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, and that the way that they give you materials... I was able to, uh, I'd only killed, of the four boss souls, I'd only killed uh, the Lost Center. I don't think I was even halfway done with the game by any stretch, and I had already maxed out my longsword and still had a Titanite slab and other materials on me. So clearly, you know, they solved the problem. One of the biggest issues with Dark Souls 2 was the rarity of upgrade materials early on. They were locked away for quite a while. It was difficult to level up level up. Upgrade your materials, I mean. I guess you could sort of consider that like leveling up your weapons. Oh, shoot. Yeah, they do still have that little kind of silly rushdown attack where they literally lift the weapon up above their head and come running at you with it pointed at you. So that's a thing. Gotta be careful of that. 
that lantern dude activates all of the uh, otherwise domicile enemies. They're usually not hostile unless you attack them or aggravate them. Unless that guy shows up and does his thing. Shoot. I'm trying to practice a little bit. Whoa, that was like I was trying to do a backstab but utterly failed. Interesting. You, you saw me do the backstab animation but then yet fail to actually complete it. Oops, I hit the wrong button. There we go. I'm gonna go over here, see if I can not get hit by... Oh, the firebomb that just smacked me right in the face. Oh, shoot. Alright, let's chug some Estus. Uh, there's one Estus Splash Shard somewhere in this level, I remember. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, that guy got me again! I fell for him a second time. Feel dumb? Alright. Uh, actually, I don't think there's anything else up here, is there? <laughs> I probably didn't need to come back up this way. No, I didn't. Okay, well that's fine. Getting some souls, I guess. Unnecessarily. Some uh, combat practice, how about that? Come out, come out. Those of you who are going to run at me. Ooh, one shot. Nice. Firebomb. Look at that guy hiding behind these boxes. Oh. Love all the stuff you can break. Look at that. No matter what I do, uh, I pretty much never see my frame rate drop, so the game plays pretty well. Although, um, to put things in perspective, the game doesn't really push the system that hard, so uh, yeah. They should have offered improved effects and textures for the PC version, as well as better draw distances and not have the texture pop in and the object pop in that they have. Uh, that's still in the game, uh, obviously from the consoles. So, you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. I thought I had it. Hang on now. There we No? I was pretty sure I had the backstab. I guess not. And if I remember correctly, a dragon will burn those stairs. Will, will, will the dragon burn this area if I move forward? I don't even remember. I better get my health up in case uh, the dragon does burn that area. I can't remember which. I'm pretty sure he just burns the stairs. I really want to get that bowman so they can't keep shooting at me. But then there's another one back there, too. Oh, crap. It went right through the box and hit me. I thought it hit the box first. Come on, guys. Come on back here. Let's draw him out. Oh, shoot. Okay, I got him right before he got me. Mmm, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I can't believe I'm about to die. There we go. Whew, I need more Estus already. <laughs> I'm burning through my Estus. I need to, I'm going to test this theory here. Okay, I think now he'll burn both sides. Okay. There we go. Axe man is down, and I believe that dude can drop his axe. I could probably run up there and grab that first item. Maybe. Or maybe not. <laughs> hmm. It's hard to gauge.
wonder if you could jump off the side right there. It certainly looks like you should be able to do a running jump. Although it would probably be instant death if you were to make it across there. Okay, so he does burn this area down here. Okay. Well, now I'm out of Estus. I think I can run it now. I think I'm safe. I think I made it past him. Uh oh, this area is smoking. Oh crap. <laughs> Fighting this guy with no S, this is not the ideal situation to be in. See if I can, uh. Oh, get him to wig out right here. Well, this is not exactly a perfect spot, though, because he can still hit me. Ooh, shoot. Crap. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, crap. Woo! Those guys are intense. Oh, gosh. Fighting that guy is like going camping. It's intense. Get it? Okay. Anyway. Uh, where... Oh, where are... Okay, there's another enemy. And I think if I unlock that, that's a shortcut. Ooh, deserter trousers. I like them deserters. Oh, come on now. Oh, well. Oh, what do we got? A raw gem. Gotta polish that up and make it a polished gem. Or we could throw it in a pan and cook it. And that's a cooked gem. It's no longer raw. What the heck? <laughs> he came at me like I was at the entrance. It's like it's like a set program thing for him to move in a certain direction. Let's see if we can get this. Alrighty, fire bombs. That's okay. Not gonna make a big difference for me. And somewhere in one of these areas or an area like it is an Estus flash shard. Oh, look at him. He fell down. Oh, crap. <laughs> I need to be paying attention. Oh, he's back. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Come on. Oh, that counted as a backstab. Remember, the backstab detects you're in the right position based on where the enemy is is would be or will be after they're done with their current animation so even though it you're not technically at their back at the moment that you do the backstab you would be if they finish their animation so for some reason you know if an enemy it turns sideways to swing their sword at you wherever their back was right before they started that animation is where the backstab actually counts not where their back currently is which you know i mean Game logic makes sense, but you know, otherwise than that, it might might seem kind of silly. Like, why is uh, why is this counting as a backstab? That's not his back, but that's where his back would be. So that's where it counts it. If that makes any sense, the same was actually true in Dark Souls. So it's just how that works, I guess. Got to be careful in here. You never know what's gonna come out and get you. Like that guy right there. Oh shoot! There we go. Okay. Whew. These guys are a little trickier than I remember. Okay. Well, we're not exactly at a good spot to stop, but we are coming towards the end of this first episode based on time. The mail breaker. Thanks. Thanks, FromSoft. You know, but we will cut it here and pick it back up with the next episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I know I am. Dark Souls 3 Return to Lothric, Episode 1. I'm Fox with Foxio Plays. Check the video description for links to all my other stuff like media accounts, you know, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Minds, Gab, all that jazz. I'll see you guys next time. Later.